Life's too short to drive boring cars. So many people think BMWs are ultra unreliable, but in reality, they're actually not that bad. A lot of it has to do with parts and maintenance are a little pricey. And so some people defer some of those things. I know I've owned many BMWs and I've made some of these key mistakes myself along the way, just for the sake of saving money or underestimating the value of doing certain maintenance tasks. But honestly, making these five mistakes can be the difference between your car lasting 90,000 miles and lasting 300,000 miles. So you're definitely gonna wanna follow along. Let's get into it now. So the first mistake that a lot of people make is regarding the oil services. And unfortunately, people get sucked in like a vortex saying the dealer tells you, you know what, your car is actually good for 15,000 miles or 24 months. Well, you think that's great by doing that, but in actuality, you're doing your car a misservice. Why would BMW do such a misleading thing? Well, there's a lot of reasons for it. Number one is marketing bragging rights. Okay, I sell a car. You don't need to do maintenance for so long. But the number two reason, and actually realistically, the primary reason BMW extends these service intervals is because a lot of these maintenance programs include free maintenance for the first few years or first couple of years. So it just means they're saving themselves a pile of money. Come on, that's a great business opportunity, isn't it? Don't get sucked into that vortex. If you really care about your car and you wanna keep it for a long time, you better be looking at oil changes anywhere from five to 7,500 miles instead of the ridiculous 15,000 miles. Now, why you ask is that such a big deal? Okay, well, oil does a lot of things. It lubricates your engine, the bottom end, the top end. It does a lot of great things to keep your engine in one piece and running smoothly. Did you realize the oil also runs and operates a lot of the modern systems like the Vanos, for example, which is their variable valve timing. And without that, and that starts to fail, you can wind up with a vehicle that's not operating properly. Vanos ultimately gives you the lower end grunt and the top end breathing power. And if your variable valve timing's not working, hey, guess what? You'll notice sluggish driving. How about cooling? Yes, engine oil actually helps cool an engine slightly on the insides too. The more friction, the more heat. So if there's less friction, of course you're reducing internal heat. We can't also forget about sludge. If you leave old engine oil in there too long, that creates sludge that causes other, wreaks other havoc within the engine as well. It reduces amount of oil flow, increases wear and tear on the insides of the engine. How about the good old oil consumption? As you start to break down the oil, you start to see increased oil consumption. With oil consumption, it's just a vicious circle and the cycle continues to the point where engine deterioration and wear is inevitable and irreversible. Have you also heard that some of the BMWs on extended oil services now are seen with collapsed oil filters? In other words, when you go to make the change and you pull the filter out, you're finding some of the pleats are collapsed and starting to pull through into the housing. That's right, they're actually starting to melt and dissolve because of the acidic oil that sits in the engine. So at the end of the day, don't wait for 15,000 miles. Even 10,000 miles is a bit of a stretch. Be sure to change your oil around five to 7,500 miles. The second big mistake that a lot of people make is not changing their coolant. Yes, that's right, the antifreeze in your BMW. It's that fancy blue stuff that people talk about all the time. Now, BMW often doesn't push that too hard. However, generally the recommended change is about 100,000 miles. And unfortunately, a lot of people just say, yeah, you know what, I'll do without it. It's not a big deal. But in fact, it is a big deal because what ends up happening, it creates scaling and other deterioration. It also reduces cooling capacity because coolant ultimately takes hot engine parts, transfers that heat through cooling fins and for example, the radiator and allows it to properly cool and transfers the heat to other parts so it can dissipate it appropriately. But unfortunately, if you don't have the cooling medium working properly, you're going to have a reduction in cooling capacity. Now, did you realize with that scaling and with the deterioration also creates a change in the pH levels of the antifreeze? Now, pH does that matter. I'm not a chemist. No, it, you don't have to be a chemist, but what I can tell you is increased acidity as a result. And with increased acidity, what do you think that does to a lot of the internal parts? Now, BMW's known they have a lot of plastic cooling parts, hoses, plastic radiator necks, plastic thermostats, plastic water pumps. And it's the plastic water pumps that are known to fail at a pretty high rate. Now, I could personally speak from experience. I had a, one of those wonderful N54 twin turbo powered BMWs back in the day. It was an E92 coupe. Great car for driving, but I'll tell you, I didn't have to worry about changing my coolant every 100,000 miles because something, a hose or a water pump or a thermostat failed on me every 5,000 kilometers. 
so it didn't matter. I was always changing to coolant, which was truly a pain and a drain on the pocketbook. So be sure to change your coolant regularly. And when you see some of those components failing, which is typically around 80 to 120,000 miles, you might as well start changing a few of the parts within the same area. For example, one hose goes, maybe change out all the hoses and do a rehose at that time because it's sure to be an indication that you're going to see many more imminent failures. So the third mistake that a lot of people make has to do with the turbos. Hey, did you know that almost every single BMW today runs a turbo? And it's not just BMW. A lot of manufacturers now are all going to turbocharging because it increases power, increases efficiency. Often you can get away with a smaller displacement engine, replace it with a turbo, and you meet all the emissions standards as well as increased performance and output with less cylinders. But there is a downside to turbos, and ultimately it's maintenance and it's generally heat that it creates within the engine compartment. Now I'll give you some examples. The BMW N63 engine before the TU, so the upgraded version is slightly improved, although the original N63, which is the V8 4.4 liter twin turbo, actually has two turbos packaged neatly within the V of the engine, which seems like a great idea until it take it to practice. Now what ends up happening is for efficiency, yes, no turbo lag. For power, yes, Lots of it because it's twin turbo, lots of breathing. The downside is, unfortunately, it creates so much heat within that V of the engine, it starts to roast the engine and it can't move that heat out of there adequately. So what ends up happening is you cook the head. So any wiring or plastics in the area take a cooking. As well, we can't forget about the valve guide seals. After all, they are sort of a rubberized compound. They cook. The valve guides start to cook the gaskets start to cook, you wind up with top end oil leaks, you wind up with oil consumption, and it just leads into a nightmare at the end of the day. So doing proper oil service, cooling down your engine appropriately, and just monitoring your oil consumption is all going to help you in the long term. But don't forget, there's been recalls and there's been a service bulletin as well as lawsuit associated with this particular problem. So education of what this problem is can go a long ways as well. But have you ever heard the term run hard and put it away wet? Well, that's exactly kind of what you don't want to do. So not just the N63, pretty much any BMW. What I'll tell you right now is if you're driving the car on the freeway, the highway, if you're racing it or you're driving it hard for a period of time, and then you say, pull over to the side of the road, go into a gas station, go into your house, whatever that is, do not turn the car off immediately that will likely start to lead to early deterioration of the turbo. It'll start to break down the seals. It'll start to wear on the bearings. Why? Because the oil starts to coke around the bearings. And that's a bad thing. Yes, it is. It'll, it'll lead to early turbo failure. So what you want to do is give it 30 seconds to a minute of idle before you turn it off. Yes, I know there will be people that will tell me that there's also coolant that goes through modern turbos to help cool it, and that continues to circulate. That's somewhat true, but hot oil, it's still good to circulate hot oil through, and it's always good practice to let the engine cool for 30 seconds to a minute before you shut it down. So the fourth reason, guys, has to do with winterization. And a lot of people don't winterize their vehicles properly, or even if you leave it sit for a long period of time. Let's face it, a lot of BMWs, for example, a lot of M cars, and even some of the, you know, an i8, for example, a lot of cars wind up sitting for winters. A lot of people choose not to drive them for winter, or a lot of them tend to sit for a long period of time. That just seems to be the way and the nature of these particular cars. If you're winterizing or your vehicle sits for extended periods, for example, two or three months and beyond, you definitely want to pay special attention. A lot of people don't do that. So A, you want to have good fuel, but not alcohol-based fuel. Don't put alcohol in your tank. Alcohol separates. Once you start running it again, you wind up with water pockets and water goes through the injection system, creates corrosion. That's not a good situation. As well, we can't forget about oil service. If you're going to park your car for a long period of time, you must change your oil before you park it, not after you take it out in the spring. Because now you've developed oil acids and those acids rot away bottom end of the engine. You can rot away rod bearings oil pumps and internal components that are irreversible. Again, it'll cause all kinds of different problems within your engine. So fresh oil, topped up fuel with good non-alcohol based fuel, stabilizer never hurts. Make sure your tires are also pressured up as well. I've had a car years ago, a 911, that I actually had to throw away a set of tires that still had about 65, 70% wear on them because I sat on some cold concrete 
for about eight months and then the cars the tires would never totally round out again they stayed kind of square and you could destroy a set of tires so make sure you pump up the pressure a little bit more than you normally would for winter storage as well if you can park it on some carpet or soft pads so, so reduce the impact of possibly flatlining your tires. Now the fifth thing, and it's probably one of the biggest mistakes that we all make as BMW owners, and it's ignoring the signs. And what do you mean by that? Well, there's lots of indicators. You can be driving down the road and your car makes some strange noises, pulls to the side, it shakes and shimmies. Those are all signs, and sometimes they're more obvious than other times. I'll give you some examples. Overheating. Now we already spoke of cooling systems being a problem in BMWs. Well, if you service them appropriately and maintain the systems, keep the cooling system running optimally, you should have little problems. But if you spring a leak or you're running low on coolant and all of a sudden you're driving down the road and your car starts to run a little hotter than you normally see it, stop, drop and roll, not literally, but def basically shut your car off, let it cool down. And I would even recommend just towing it in from there. If you overheat most BMW engines these days, because most of them are all aluminum, you will almost guarantee to destroy the engine or at the very minimum, wind up having to create a scenario where you have to remachine heads and rework part of the engine because you will likely damage it if you overheat it too far. So don't let a BMW engine overheat. Also, don't ignore alignment issues. I mean, Lord knows that a lot of these roads these days are bad. Obviously, with the conditions of the state of the economy, a lot of the government and local jurisdictions don't have the money to repair the roads as they should. And sometimes we find ourselves driving down garbage roads. And when you do and you hit the odd pothole, it sometimes knocks your car out of alignment. Don't ignore alignment issues. Maybe your car pulls hard to one side, maybe hitting the brakes pulls it or maybe it shakes and shimmies and does strange things. If it does any of those things, I would advise checking on your alignment. If you have an alignment issue and you run too long, while your vehicle's out of alignment, you risk ruining a set of tires. Now, many BMWs now run on 18, 19, 20 inch wheels, and those tires become very, very expensive. How'd you like to accelerate the wear on a set of 20 inch M5 tires? I sure wouldn't. I mean, those can cost you in around two, three, four thousand dollars all said, once you have to change a full set of skins. So be sure your alignment is up to snuff and you get the maximum wear out of your BMW tires. Also, don't ignore your check engine lights. I know a lot of people, I personally know people that do that. That fancy little check engine light that sits on your dashboard, that sits and glares, it's that yellow light. And you know, a lot of people tend to ignore them. How many times have you heard people say, oh, it's probably just a loose gas cap? 99% of the time, it's not a loose gas cap, folks. I personally have experienced that. I have new, numerous check engine lights over the years with different vehicles, and it has never once been a gas cap related issue, not sealing. It's usually some other issue, a bad O2 sensor, mass airflow sensor, or some other problem within the engine. Don't ignore it. It can cause different running conditions. It can cause extra fueling or lean running. It can cause all kinds of different problems, idle problems lots of different issues you don't want to have because it can lead to further deterioration of the engine or any other systems within the car. So when you have a CEL, be sure to check it as soon as you physically can. Do not ignore that sign, that's a big one. And another one that's easy to ignore is the TPMS, which is the tire pressure monitoring system. On most cars today, most luxury cars, and certainly virtually every BMW has a tire pressuring monitoring system, which detects when one, two, three, four tires wind up a little low. Maybe cool weather sometimes activates them, but more often than not, you have a leak. If you've been good for months or years and all of a sudden one tire goes low, there's a good chance you have a slow leak or maybe a nail or a screw in your tire. I know I've had a few of my share. You drive through a neighborhood where they're building new homes, all of a sudden you wind up with a flat tire and you wonder why. Well, these guys are throwing nails and screws on the, on the ground and you wind up driving by and pick one up. Now, don't ignore the signs because the, wor the best thing you can do is drive around with it and you ruin a tire. That's the best thing. The worst case is you ruin the tire and you ruin the rim because you drive too long. And could you imagine, again, as I say, original factory OEM equipment, 20 inch BMW M5 rim, you wreck that. How much is that going to cost you? Several thousand dollars. And nobody wants to go through insurance for a spare rim. Even with tires, if I can remind you that a lot of these BMW tires are run flats. Now the problem with run flats are if you have 90% tire wear left, sure. You can replace that tire, no problem, and it balances adequately with the other three. But unfortunately, as soon as you get down around you know, 60, 70%, what it often means is BMW will say, no, we won't replace one, we have to replace a pair of them if you're driving on a two-wheel drive vehicle. If it happens to be an all-wheel drive vehicle, you may actually have to replace four tires because of a goofy nail in your tire. 
So don't ignore the signs. Even worse, if you wind up driving too long on them and wreck a tire entirely, some shops will repair a nail or a screw and do a proper plug on it, and you can save some money there, but at the end of the day, if you run too long, you'll wreck the tire and the rim, and that will end up costing you a fortune, something you definitely don't want to have. And with all of that said, you're probably wondering which are the most reliable BMW engines ever, in case you're looking for a used car. Check that video out. It's going to share the whole story with you, lock, stock, and barrel. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.